I'm getting tired of this, brother. Leaking oil. <laughs> so, uh, aside from those little drawings of him, you know, standing as a robot and then back to the vehicle, that's all we really have. Really Amazing you were able to put that much interpretation into, into the, uh, these toys. No, we were excited by the sheer fact that it was never been done. No, and they were this is unique. unique. That was fun to see because in all the other stuff we were doing, there's nothing like it. So we walked into something new, and that was really fun. It was a revolution. It was a revolution. I'll ask you a question. Okay. Because when you have all of these transformers, and you were in that position that you had to look at these and pick those voices, what what were you looking for? Were you looking for something different? Orchestrate these voices so they can kind of, kind of sound like uh, this, was this way, this way. Well, I, I think that's a very good question. Because it ties into it's, it's kind of the flip of what I asked you guys. Yes. In other words, what we what we would do is we we had the sketches. We actually had some preliminary toys, physical three dimensional toys, and then we had Marvel comics biographies or bios of the characters. So we knew, or I knew, the people I worked with, that was not only, it wasn't just me, it was a team of us. We knew what we were kind of looking for. Uh, you know, it, it was easy to do like a, an optimist or a negative one. You knew what was in your head anyway. You can imagine who they were gonna sound like. I mean, they were gonna be the big leaders, bold, deep voices. When it came to some of those other characters, um, you know, it was like, okay, what does Bumblebee sound like? You know, or, you know, Starscream. Well, what does Starscream sound like? And so we were just looking for something different. Uh, you know, we were trying to say, because you didn't want all the voices to be the same, obviously. You wanted a characterization. And it's people like you that provided that. You got them. <laughs> we'll get a couple of characters up here on stage. Now, so that brings up another question. Um, you guys are playing well with each other here on stage. When I've seen the animation, current animation, like they go behind the scenes for the Disney animation, and you see the actors, the movie star actors that we're familiar with on the big budget movies go and do voices, it seems like they're there by themselves doing the voice at the microphone. How did you guys work? How did the, the, the did, did, did it work as part of this? Did you guys work with what I think of as a radio uh, drama where several people were in the studio together and bouncing off each other? We all worked together. Okay, good. So there may have been 14 guys. Really? Sure. Uh, all in a row, facing the glass to the director. And uh, that was the magic about it because the very first production, you remember? We had never heard any of the other character voices, and we were reading the script for the first time. And we're all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to remember it in there? Yes. <laughs> Is that you, Frank? No, that was you. Oh, no. I'm all right here. <laughs> but yeah, that is magical when, when you're. Uh, and we're doing it now more often than not. Going individually, which is not as much fun. But, you know, there's a viability for, in terms of speed, or if you're doing a character that hurts your throat a lot, you concentrate on it and get it done. But when you're doing an ensemble piece, like with the cast, uh, and Transformers Prime was the last time we got to work together, ensemble. And uh, there's a great joy in that because it's like you're in play. You know, it's just, you're not in costume, but you're in hand in your costume. Sure. But playing off of each other, I think you get a little bit more about the momentum. I know Peter and I do. When we get our characters going, they're, uh, they're characters that are no longer being right? So what, since we have the hero and the villain on stage? Fighting, the fighting stuff is always afterwards. You're making the sounds, and the director's been asking, you know, give me some higher, give me some boots. You're getting punched, now you're getting a punch. And, uh, oh, you're really getting hurt. You know, it's called. Uh, then we get into the wall, 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 wall. But it, it's exhausting, you know. 
So fortunately, we don't have to do that, you know, while we're acting out. It's hard to say, you know, back in July, you know, you will want to know that somebody else. <laughs> I think that was Belgium, my feelings. Uh, somebody else? Yes, and there's somebody else. <laughs> Just make that up, or was that? No, that's that's part of the show. He loves his, his, you know. I haven't seen enough. <laughs> anyway. Can you believe that? I really do. Anyway, Optimus Prime doesn't watch. No. Hey, he does. Yes. Okay. <laughs> always, always. But I just thought I'd throw in Eeyore and you know just say you know I was on you. <laughs> yeah. Not that anybody else likes was on. But he likes lasagna. And I like you. Oh. So can I come over to your house and eat some lasagna? I got thistles. <laughs> thistles? Yeah, thistles. I clean my teeth with thistles. After the lasagna. <laughs> Right, 
Peter, <clears throat> to, I think to everyone here, I mean, you, you are optimists. Um, you, you played optimist. I didn't realize this. You played optimist in the animation, obviously. Um, I didn't realize you did the voice of Optimus for the films. Optimus Prime. No, I said Optimus. I play Optimus. <laughs> I said Optimus in the films. Yes. I didn't realize that you had done that. Where have you been for the last? <laughs> Come on, Kirk. <laughs> I don't feel so bad now. <laughs> well, this is going to sound even worse. I didn't realize you did the voice in the video game either. Oh. <laughs> you don't get out there LA too often, baby. No, I don't. Why well, don't you just stay at my house? <laughs> I'll take you up on that. I've got pictures from Astro. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Things you've never seen before. <laughs> the reason I ask is, okay. did you ever expect this character to endure as long as he has? No. Uh, well, especially after the feature film, the animated film in 1986. Right, right. Which brings Which, up that, another question. Okay. okay, go ahead. First one's first, because Frank and I worked with Orson Welles on that picture, and uh, we were intimidated, of course, and uh, that is a story unto itself, and I might... I Why don't you go into it then? <laughs> well, we were sitting uh, nearby each other, and I was going through the script, and I was rifling through. And, you know, uh, actors often, you know, go through the script, and they see their, their character, and circle it, and then see it again, circle it, turn the page, circle it, circle it. Well, I had been circling mine, and all of a sudden, I didn't see anything after page 17. <laughs> <laughs> I turned all the way down the page. Gotta be in here somewhere. Maybe I've got the last line, you know. And then I went back and to where I ended off, and I read it, and it says Optimus Prime Death Scene. <laughs> Frank, are you page seventeen? Turn over me. Ooh. <laughs> Have you been parking in the director's parking spot? <laughs> my stud. Oh, anyway, my. I, would be, I looked at him and said, I was kind of stunned. And I said, well, back in those days, a job was a job, you know, and, and uh, you went on to the next one. I was never uh, working as much as Frank did. Frank had one time, and one day, I think he had nine nine cartoon series to do in one day. All different series in one day. Twelve. Twelve? <laughs> but who's going <laughs> Well, but you always figured you're, you know, you're, you know, you're as good as your last job. At least that's what an actor would, would think, you know. If you uh, get, you know, run off a show, the first instinct is to say, you know, boy, my character must have been really bad. I must have one. You don't know because you don't get uh, fan mail. We never got any fan mail. Uh, no thermometer to judge the popularity by any means. And so you just assume the worst and, uh, and you're hurt. You know, I was sad. And uh, I said, get on with your life, you know. But next day, audition different job, get it out of your mind. And then 15 years later, feature film, and Michael Bay called me up and, uh, you know, agents called up and said, uh, Michael Bay wants to see you. I said, for what? To read the part of Optimus Prime. And I said, again? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I auditioned three more times, or two more times, and finally, and I will say this, it was the uh, tenacity of the fan base of Generation One and uh, the love I have for the fan base is... Uh, <laughs> Thank you.
No, we've been family. We've been family for a long time, and uh, I never failed to recognize the, the bond that we have together that goes back so many years. And uh, I'm so grateful for you guys and gals. I'm really grateful. I love you. See, in comic books, when they kill a character off, you know the character's gonna come back maybe in another nine months or a year. It took 15 years for, for Optimus Prime to come back. <laughs> But we're glad he did. We're glad he did. Okay, Speak I guess for yourself. close to wrapping up, but what I wanted to know is who are some of the more popular characters you guys played that you would mind playing again? Reprising a role, if you can think of any of those. Or just who were some of the characters over the course of your career that you truly enjoyed? I mean, I'm guessing I can, based on who you performed on stage, I can guess who they are, but are there some others that, you know, you really got a kick out of playing? I remember playing the king of the world. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was thinking about Peter's career. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I like Slimer. Oh, yay! Help me! Yay! Oh, oh. And Curious George. <laughs> You know, it, I, I think Peter will agree, but it, it's, it's just such a joy to be in this business where you have a huge palette of all kinds of characters. And, and even the incidentals, whether they be a king or a, or a taxi driver, um, I mean, some of those can be the absolute most fun, even, even though it's not a lasting character. So uh, I just think we're just so lucky to have, like say, the ability or the option, or the opportunity. It's mm -hmm. coming, It'll take me a while, you know, I, I majored in gym and I only got to the sixth grade, so give me some time. But to have the opportunity to, uh, to play all different kinds of roles is a real treat. So that's my sloppy answer. Yeah. I'm that's still gonna love it. Great answer. I, Kirk, I, I think the only way to respond to that is by saying, the characters that made people happy are the characters that made me happy. Good. And uh, the characters that had fun and the characters that could, you know, get a laugh out of somebody. There is nothing quite like being in a session with a whole group of talented actors. And if you can uh, make them laugh, you know, it's hard to imagine you're getting paid. You know, they're actually paying me to do this? Oh, sometimes it can be naive, you know. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's always that sense of, of uh, what people uh, do to make you laugh, and uh, that's where the joy comes in. You love your work, that's the most important thing in all of life, is and to love what you do. I couldn't agree more, and you guys certainly epitomize that. You can sense it being here on stage with you guys. So I look out in the audience, I see some young people in the audience. Um, what advice would you have for anyone who might want to become a voice actor? Do you have any? Well, just in terms of technology, uh, there's so much out there now that you could play with uh, to test and practice your voices. But early on, uh, I would say try and get your hands on books and just read and read and read and read. Um, to me, that's one of the most important things you can do because not only does it give you the ability to read words, but also it gives you ideas and it gives you a, a tremendous resource to draw on when you, need to, when you need it. So I think reading is good. And then when you really want to get in the business and read aloud, read commercials, uh, for a while, I think everybody starts out by impersonating other characters and voices and then develop your own. 
And like Peter says, if you love it and you're good at it, nobody can stop you. So enjoy. Just go for it. Uh, I learned uh, from a line in one of the scripts in Transformers. And it was sent to me by a young boy who did not uh, live long enough to complete the, the uh, stitching of Optimus Prime's small little figure. And, but his wish was to be able to have his dream line on the bottom of this picture of Optimus Prime. And the line was, I said it once in one show, hold on to your dreams. The future is built on dreams. And that stuck with me forever. And that was his line that he wanted to be remembered by for everybody else. And so I give that as my, my little <coughs> adage, you know, hold on to your dreams, the future, your future is built on dreams. So, hope that okay, answers. Great, great. I, I, I can't think of a better way of a better way to end today's uh, panel. Thank all of you for coming, and I want to say thank you to these guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. I love y'all, you guys. I love y'all.